So you live in a cookie cutter home. You have one of those homes where it's in an area where all of the homes look the same. You know, I mean, I grew up in one of those neighborhoods where every house was like a slightly different version of the one next to it. In my town, we had like little subdivisions and they had like funny names like Randall Square and Mill Creek. And Mill Creek, the sign, people used to vandalize it all the time and write Milf Creek because there were a lot of hot moms that lived in Mill Creek. A lot of rich hot moms. But anyways, in these subdivisions, all of the homes kind of look the same. Or maybe you live in an apartment complex where it's just like a white box. And to find a home that has amazing architecture, like really cool features, that's just sometimes a little bit more money, a little bit more effort. Maybe you have to do renovations. So a lot of the times I feel like you go with these homes that are just ready to go and maybe they're not as unique as you would like them to be. So you can, you know, furnish the place or add in art or whatever. But I wanna talk about some ways that you can make your cookie cutter home a little bit more unique in the sense of stuff that's like outside of furnishing. Like what could you do to your actual space to make it more unique? So if you live in Milf Creek and you bought a pretty cookie cutter home, here are my tips on how to make a pretty boring space just a little bit more unique. And here we have your lovely suburban home. And you know, this is a nice home. It's affordable. It's practical. I grew up in something very similar in a subdivision that, you know, every other house was like, is that my house? Oh wait, no, it's five more doors down. That's actually my house. Okay, so the first thing that I would suggest when, let's start with the, okay. Teague, you're making me upset. The first thing I would suggest, let's start with the outside. I have a few pointers for the outside of your house before we move inside is uh, landscaping. My dad used to have these like marshmallow bushes where we like shaved them like perfectly egg shaped. And I think that's just a trend within suburbia. So I would just do some research on the type of landscaping that would fit your home rather than copying everyone else's because I would prefer my yard to look like this instead of this. So now that you have the landscaping planned out. Now let's go up to your front door. The first thing that I would suggest is replacing your cement walkway with a brick walkway, brick or stone or just something to make it a little bit more homey and welcoming rather than just the plain old cement. Like it's usually people have the sidewalk and then the walkway up is like the same thing. Hey, what's that noise? I know, but I'm filming. Hey. So you've upgraded your landscaping, you've upgraded the walkway, and now you're at your front door. So if you have an outdated front door, just replace it, paint it. If it has like a little window in it, I honestly would suggest replacing the door because your whole facade of the house could be just whatever. And then if you have a nice, unique, like wood front door, it already upgrades the home just through doing that. Just having good landscaping, a cobblestone walkway, and a good front door, you're done. I mean, you could make other upgrades, but you know, we're pretending we're like on a budget. So those are my suggestions for the front. Now let's go to the back yard because you most likely have a deck. If you live in suburbia, you probably have a deck. And if you do, don't paint it orange and don't paint it red and don't stain it like a red color. Think more natural. Think natural wood looks amazing on a deck and so does a dark walnut stain, I think. And then if you really want to, you could paint your deck white, but that just seems like a lot of upkeep, having a painted deck, whereas like a stained deck. I just say go natural because the orangey like man-made look just really dates your home. So I would suggest stripping that paint and going with the natural look. Anything outside I feel like looks better when it like blends into nature just a little bit 
more. Let's take a little break to talk about today's sponsor, ThreadUp. ThreadUp is an online consignment and thrift store that believes in sustainable fashion. Their mission is to inspire a new generation of shoppers to think secondhand first. First, I got this Burberry pullover sweater for $128.99 and it was originally $590. So this Nine West tote is also one of my summer staples now. And it was originally $79. I got it for $24.99. I got this Orvis cardigan for $27.99 and it was originally $95. And I never would have thought I would be carrying a Vera Bradley tote, but I found this vintage one for $29.99, originally $64. I got this Fasanabla long sleeve button down shirt for $36.99 and it was originally $214. I really love this Max Mara blazer. The color is perfect for summer. It was originally $1,250 and I got it for $109.99. And guess what? ThreadUp is offering you all 35% off your first order and free shipping using my code WASSEL. Or use the link in my description. Again, that's 35% off your first order and free shipping with my code WASSEL. Thanks again, ThreadUp, for sponsoring this video. And before we head inside, I do want to give one really like specific suggestion for your yard. You have just a very plain grass rectangle. Why not throw a bonfire pit in the back corner? That's what my parents did. Either one, either side, throw a bonfire pit and plant some trees, some pine trees around it. I think it adds just a nice little viewpoint in the back of your yard. It also adds some greenery back there and it also kind of just encloses the space. Wow, I'm doing this a lot with my arm. Overall, it's just pleasant to look at and honestly fun to use. I loved growing up with a bonfire pit. It's also a great DIY project. You can easily build one yourself. And again, just upgrading the backyard so you don't just have this, you know, that's my property line right there. Okay, so now we are inside and your home has a lot of wood. I would presume if you have, you know, a outdated cookie cutter home, maybe from the 90s, that you have a lot of this toned wood around your space. My first suggestion would be to paint the top trim. If you have trim on the top of your wall and it's wood, paint it white. I think anything that cuts off the top, you want to make your room look like it's extending, like it's tall. And when there's like a weird border around it, remove it or paint it white because it just immediately makes your room feel like a little box. So that's my first suggestion is painting your wood trim white. So your upper wood trim, your lower wood trim is fine. I don't think all wood needs to be painted white because wood goes in and out of style. So you wanna be careful when, when choosing to, you know, get rid of some beautiful wood. Even though it might look outdated, it might come back. But I do suggest the top, the top trim. Is your room just a square? I need to stop doing this with my hand. Is your room just a white square? If it's just a white square, I have the perfect solution for you and that's bookshelves. You must install floor to ceiling, wall to wall bookshelves. That's all you have to do. Make them yourself, buy freestanding ones from Ikea and make it look like a wall unit. You need some type of wall unit when you have literally just all white walls. That's my number one suggestion. People think that you have these built-in like authentic shelves and maybe you do, maybe you can afford doing that. Or maybe, yeah, again, it's like the Ikea version, but regardless, it's gonna look good and it's going to make your really boxy white room feel just a little, a little bit more cozy. You know what I mean? Thank you. Now let's say you have a pretty generic kitchen. I feel like granite countertops can't really go wrong. Like even the bad ones from the nineties or whenever can still be lived with. Like it's usually just like a muted granite stone. Like the worst of them are like this deep beige granite, but most of the time you can live with your countertops. So unless you have a lot of budget to redo your kitchen, Keep your countertops and remove your backsplash. Just remove it. You don't even have to replace it. 
just remove your backsplash. That's all you have to do because if you have an outdated kitchen, normally the backsplash is probably the worst part. Yes, cabinets, you know, can be bad too and granite can be bad, but not as bad as a backsplash, which is usually some type of like unique, weird pattern that's really outdated. And if you don't have the budget to replace it, just remove it. Like check this out, no backsplash. You don't need a backsplash. Like we're not in a shower. Like we can, we can like manage the sink without a backsplash. I've talked about this one before, but I wanna take it one step further. Adding in vintage wall detailing can do a lot to your space, especially if you love like an older antique look. Adding in, you know, wainscoting that you can get off Wayfair or even from Home Depot or Amazon, you can literally just put it on your wall and paint it. I also would suggest taking it one step further, getting the molding that goes around your pendant chandeliers. So if you have a dining room and you install a nice modern fixture, you can buy this unique molding that goes around the fixture up at the ceiling. Even just simple ones like this, I think can add just such a nice touch to something that you never really would even think to pay attention to, to be honest. So adding in vintage detailing through wainscoting and just detailed molding. You can get a lot of this off of Home Depot, Wayfair, anywhere. A few quick little tidbits that I've said in previous videos, replace your boob lights, replace your kitchen cabinet handles and replace your doorknobs. All very easy little touches that I have said over and over again. Now we're in your bathroom. Do you have a dance studio mirror? You know, one of these? Just a mirror that's basically your wall. I'm not a huge fan of those, even though they do open up the space a lot. It depends on like, do you want practicality or do you want something unique? So if it were me, I, I, balance, I teeter on that, but I would actually not have a dance studio mirror in my bathroom. I think your bathroom looks a lot more upgraded if you don't have this mirror and you have two individual unique mirrors above each sink. If you have an outdated fireplace in your family room, I think upgrading that and not even doing anything really else to the space could make a huge difference. You can buy fireplace facades off of Craigslist. Of You can honestly find them at like Home Depot. You can find them anywhere. Get a fireplace mantle to replace the outdated one paint the outdated one, or literally just put on a front. It's super easy. And that is one area, it's kind of like your front door. You know, it's like the center of a room or a space or the, the house that if you just have that upgraded and nothing else, it's it can make a huge difference and make your space feel a lot more unique and not as cookie cutter, you know, cause these very outdated fireplaces, if you just did this, just saying. This one's a little bit more pricey, but you can add in wood beams, you can add in pillars, you can add in things that you think would be original to the home, but you can just like add them in yourself. I've even seen people add fake white wood beams and it's not even made of wood, but you paint it and it looks like it is. So if you're really, if you're really looking to add some character to your space, I would suggest adding in beams on the ceiling or even just like a fun like pillar somewhere or some stone you know there's a lot of things you can play around with i wouldn't be scared to take risks to make a boring home feel better this is a very little touch you can do and i love it in like a kid's room or a baby room and that is replacing the floor vents with a vintage or unique one like my mom replaced just i think just me and my sisters i don't think the whole house but she replaced the floor vent that was just like a generic metal one from Home Depot with a, you know, I think we had like a white one that had like an intricate, intricate, intricate design on it. It looked like a vintage floor vent, but you could also find like fun wood ones. And I think just, you know, if you have one that's really odd, I'm looking around. Um, if you have a vent, a floor vent that's just really obvious in one of your rooms, like you can't cover it up. It's just right there. I would just get a unique little floor vent. I know that sounds really stupid and most of them can be covered, but if they're not, why not have that little touch? It's such an easy little thing to do and it looks so good. So props to Sue. And my last suggestion for making your cookie cutter home just a little bit more unique is French doors. 
Most people have sliding glass doors that go out into their deck or whatever, your patio in your backyard. If you have the money and you really want to do something to upgrade that room, add French doors. Add French doors even in, you know, sometimes people have a family room to a living room and there's like this weird arch. If you want to close it off, add French doors. Add French doors anywhere and it will make your home look like it has like, whoa, like, whoa, is this an old home? No, this was built by, you know, the contractor that owns half of the town. You know, he owns all of the subdivisions in the area. So that's why everything looks like this. But you have French doors. So now people think it's a preserved home. You know, no one can touch it because you have French doors. It's very unique. It's from, you know, the 40s. All right. And before we go, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I do have some very sad news to report that we had to put the goo down uh, two days ago. And I've been very, very sad, very, very sad. And um, yeah, I did actually film one last intro with her. Like I just was reunited with her. We we filmed a little intro for a different video I was gonna put out. And then I weirdly lost some of the footage in that video, so I couldn't put that video out. But I will end this video with that last intro of me and the Mizagoy because I loved her so. Life really said to me this year, we are gonna take away all of your comfort and all of your security blankets and we're gonna just see how you do. So, it's been fun, it's been great. <laughs> She's probably in purgatory right now because honestly she was pretty evil, so she needs to do her time before she goes to doggy heaven. Um, all right, see you all next week and um, love you, little goo. Goodbye. Check it out. Look who it is. It's Mizugui. I'm uh, in Michigan currently. Hello. I was just in Chicago after three months in LA and now I'm in Michigan this week and then I'm heading to Europe for two months. Look at this like cute little mic I got for my travels. It almost looks like it's perfect for the Gui. Say hello. Okay.